cool. Hey guys, it's Devin here with Make Anything. And I got a lot of flack for one of my episodes recently, the zip tie video. You can check it out right there. A lot of people are saying, why the heck would you 3D print a zip tie when you can buy a hundred of them for four bucks at your local hardware store? That's a fair point, but I think people would actually be surprised to find that it's really cheap to print once you have a 3D printer. One of these zip ties weighs a gram, and you can get a kilogram spool of filament for about 25 bucks, so that's $25 for a thousand of these. Sure, you have to take the time to actually print these out, but considering that it's customizable and you can add a label or you can make it themed or different colors and stuff, I think it's worth it. I think it's a reasonable thing to print. Now, that being said, although one spool of filament is cheap, when you have a 3D printer, you kind of end up wanting to print in different colors and different materials, and then you end up with way more filament than you even know what to do with. So considering I got to that point and now I have a ton of filament, I thought it would be interesting to put them through some kind of standardized test so I could compare how strong different filaments are and just see the different properties of the different types of plastic. So that's what we're doing today. I took 26 different spools of filament. A lot of them are PLA from different brands, but then I also have other plastics that I use less often, but I just happen to have. So with each of my filaments, I'm going to print out two different models. They're both kind of like links in a chain, but they test different things. The first loop I'm going to print vertically. So because of the way I'm printing, if this one is pulled apart, it's going to break in between the layers. So that model is going to test the strength between layers of plastic. Then I've got another loop that I'm printing flat on the build plate. And in my slicer, Simplify 3D, I'm going to set it to vase mode. So instead of printing one layer and then stopping and moving up and printing another layer, in vase mode, the printer slowly rises while looping continuously. So it's basically creating a spiral of continuous filament. So when I try to pull that apart, it's going to be the material that fails, not the bond between the layers. So that'll be a better test for the strength of the material itself. At least that's the way I'm thinking about it. This isn't an official experiment or anything. I'm probably doing a lot of things wrong, and all you engineers out there, feel free to comment and tell me how I can do this better. Nevertheless, I think there's a lot to learn from these experiments. So let's go ahead and look at what happened. So here's my testing station, and I'm using an analog force gauge, which tests the peak amount of force required to break the material. Of course there are many different forces that can affect the material, but this is what I have right now, and so that's what I'm going to test. You can also learn a lot about the material just by watching the way it breaks. Some stretch more, and others just fall apart. For my first few tests, I just used different brands of PLA because I wanted to see if there was really a correlation between the price you're paying and the quality of filament you get. And I did find that the more premium slash brand name filaments did perform a little bit better. I don't have a heated bed, so I only tested one ABS, and while the forces involved are similar, the material seemed to flex a little bit more before breaking. I also tried a handful of wood-based filaments. And while they look awesome, they're definitely not as strong as regular PLA. Of the three I tested, the Hatchbox was the strongest, but it also looks the least like wood. Next, I tested these interesting filaments by Igus. 
Apparently they have a crazy high abrasion resistance. The layer strength, however, was not too impressive. Next up, I tried a PET Plus as well as a PET G material, and they both did alright, but they didn't beat the PLA. After that, I tried some of Tallman's notoriously strong nylon materials. I'm a big fan of the T Glaze because out of the nylon materials, I think it prints the easiest. Even with unopened spools, I found that the other nylon materials just carried a lot of moisture. The moisture causes bubbles in the filament while printing, which leaves gaps and causes material weakness. While the forces necessary to break the nylon weren't particularly impressive on paper, you can still see how much the material flexes and stretches before breaking, which can have its own benefits. I even managed to make some prints using nylon lawn trimmer, and while it didn't perform as well as the true filaments, I was still rather impressed that it would print. Next up I tested Biofilla silk and linen filaments, which are made with biopolymers and have quite interesting properties. As far as strength goes, they were quite average. And finally I tested a handful of flexible filaments, starting with the famous Ninja Flex. As you can see, it stretched quite an impressive amount before breaking. This semi-flex, also by Ninja Flex, is a little bit more stiff. It also proved to be a little bit stronger than its cousin. Sane Smart also makes a flexible filament, which is cheaper and actually prints really nicely but it can't stretch quite like Ninja Flex can. The same goes for this eSun flexible filament, which is probably the most rigid of the flexible filaments I tested. And that concludes the 24 filament strength showdown. Follow the link in the description to download this image, as well as this chart that I put together, so you can reference the strengths of all the different filaments we tested. Whew! That was an exhausting amount of work. Way more than I thought it would end up being. So, I really hope it was useful to you guys. Please let me know in the comments so I know if it's worth doing this, because I'm sure in another couple months I'll have another big pile of different filaments that I could test. Also, please remember that today we were just testing the strength of the filaments, and there's so much more that goes into what makes a good filament and what makes a bad filament. So just because something is pretty strong doesn't mean it's going to be easy to print on the printer. And just because something is weak doesn't mean it's not a really cool filament that you can still do a lot with. Alright friends, that's it for this episode. I really hope I'll see you next time. I'm having so much fun making these videos. So thank you for all the support. Thank you all my subscribers. I'm Devin. This is Make Anything. See you soon and stay inspired.